and welcome to worship at Pemina Parish. You'll notice that we're in yet a different space for worship this week. Because summer is a time of rest and relaxation for at least a lot of folks, it's a really great opportunity for us to spend more time outdoors and to have worship that's more informal. And we can have this opportunity to connect with each other and to God and to scripture in, in ways that are more playful, a little bit lighter than what we normally do. And since the summer is not quite what we probably all had hoped for, I found some worship materials that are called um, Great and Small, A Guide to the Okayest Summer Ever, which seems about right for the summer that we're, we're about to have. So let's make it the okayest summer that it can be. As we're all continuing to try to find cool spaces in the midst of the heat, let's keep in mind and in prayer the residents of BC, particularly those who have lost homes and businesses due to the wildfire. Before we begin our worship this morning, I want to share Brian's congregational meeting invite for July 8th again this week, in case some of you have missed it in previous services or in news and notes. So we'll have Brian's announcement now. I'm Brian Saunderson, and I have a message from your leadership team, and that is on July the 8th at 7 p.m., that's a Thursday night, we're having another meeting, and it'll be by Zoom again, a virtual meeting, so you're used to the process by now, so watch your upcoming news and notes for meeting information and how to register. Now at that meeting, as you probably guessed, what we'll be talking about is the renovation project at St. Paul's. Now our co-chairs of the project, Bruce and Earl, will walk you through the uh, stage of development and how things are going. There has been some changes since the annual meeting time when you last had a good, a good rundown, and the costs have gone up somewhat too. Uh, some of the cost increases have been some changes to the plan, which are, which are good changes. We've also had a few, a few surprises. So mark your calendar. For the 8th of July, it's time for a, a, a new uh, update and also uh, we'll have to approve a revised budget at that meeting. So St. Paul's members and Zion Calvin members, please plan to attend. I think this whole project involves the whole parish uh, financially and interest-wise too. So see you then. Thanks, Brian. Brian's video um, announcement is a good reminder that the work of our parish is ongoing and that the financial needs of our parish are ongoing as well. Your gifts to our parish make it possible for us to exist and for us to minister to each other and to our communities. And many of you may not know it, but one way that we do that is through prayer shawls. We have a number of folks over at the church who give time and energy and prayers to creating beautiful prayer shawls that are gifted to people who are having a tough time or who are grieving. And I want you to know that if any of you know of someone who is having a tough time and could use a prayer shawl, you can always let us know at the office and we will make sure that they get one. Your financial gifts make it possible for this ministry of care to happen. And you can continue to give to the parish throughout the summer by PAR or e-transfer or by mail or by dropping a check off at the church in Morden. Today, we want to take a moment of silence to pray for all those who are struggling, wrapping them in our love. And we want to pray as well a prayer of thanksgiving for those who contribute our shawls for this ministry. So let's take a time of silent prayer. Amen. Because our services during the summer are going to look just a little bit different than usual, and because you don't have a bulletin that you can follow along, I thought I'd kind of give you a heads up about what the service will look like, and thought that might be helpful for those who don't like surprises. So the first part of our worship service will be us connecting to each other, connecting to God through a prayer practice, and then connecting to scripture. The second part of our service will be digging in a little, digging a little into our scripture text, and then digging a little deeper. And then the third part of our service will be us exploring ways that we can look at what we've um, talked about or learned throughout our week and then being blessed to go into our, into our week from this place. You may want to have your remote or your mouse handy to pause the video as we go into connecting with each other. 
So let's connect. We want to begin our worship by connecting with each other and sharing our highs and lows from this past week. What has brought you joy? What has left you feeling sad or brought you low? You could do this by simply thinking about these things. You could do it by journaling and sharing them with God. You could turn to someone in your household and share it with them. Or you could call up a friend and share your highs and lows. Then invite them to share their highs and lows with you. And if they wonder why they're doing this, just tell them that your minister told you to. So pause the video now and share your highs and lows from the past week. And when you're done, you can simply press play on the video again. Our gathering song today is More Voices 92, Like a Rock. And it's short and it's really easy to learn. And if you like to move and do things, you might want to create your own actions to go with the song. In the hymnal, there actually are there are actions written in there. But you could always create your own as well. So let's sing together More Voices 92, Like a Rock. Now that we've connected to each other, let's take some time to connect with God. I invite you to close your eyes and take a few slow breaths. Simply quiet yourself in the presence of our creating God. Now imagine yourself sitting underneath a huge starry sky. Appreciate the grandeur of creation. Sense your smallness. Now imagine yourself atop a majestic mountain, standing at the very top. Sense your greatness. Give thanks to God for all that is great and small in this created world, yourself included. Amen. We have two scripture readings today. One is from Genesis 3 and one is from Psalm 8. And if you have your Bible handy, now is a good time for you to get it out. I'm going to turn to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis is the very first book in the Bible, if you're trying to find it. 
Genesis 3, and I'm just going to be reading verse 19. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Now our second text is from Psalm 8. So we'll turn and find Psalm 8. There we go. Psalm 8. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crown them with glory and honor. You've given them responsibility over the works of your hands. You've put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. Oh, it looks like I need to turn my lamp up a little bit there. So, let's dig into those readings just a little bit. Something I notice in those readings from the Bible is that in the first reading in Genesis, it says that human beings are like dust. You probably don't have to go very far where you are to find a little bit of dust. It could be on a shelf near you. It might be whipped up and blowing in the wind. It could be in your sandbox or your garden or out in the field. In Genesis, it says that God created all things, the whole world, even human beings out of dust. And in the great circle of life, eventually all things return to dust. So even though human beings are really, really special, we're also not all that. We're kind of, kind of like dust. But then in Psalm 8, it says that even though we're tiny compared to the vast universe of moon and stars, God still created humans in God's image giving humans responsibility to love and care for all things, from tigers and platypus to fish and oxen to the rivers and the seas. We are small and dusty, but we're also great and majestic. There's an ancient Jewish tale, and it says that every person should have two pockets. Check, do you have two pockets? I do, but they've got zippers on them. So every person should have two pockets and you should have a scrap of paper in each one. One scrap of paper should read, I am but dust and ashes. I've written small and dust. And then you should have another piece of paper and it should say, for my sake was the world created. And that comes from a special book of teachings from the rabbis called the Talmud. And I wrote great and amazing. So on one hand, we are small, we're like dust. And on the other, we're great and amazing. So the rabbis taught that whenever we feel like we're too proud, like we think that we're the smartest and the fastest and the strongest or the best, then we should read this piece of paper and remember that we're also kind of like dust. And whenever we're feeling discouraged and sad and like we're not all that amazing, we should read the second piece of paper and remember that we are God's good creation in the Bible, it's all about being both great and small. So we're going to play a song today called Great and Small. And I wanna say thank you to James and his mom, Beth, for the fun picture that they sent in to go along with our song today. So let's listen to Great and Small. 
Deep down here inside my pocket, there's a little piece of paper. Take it out and read it. But I'm feeling out of shape to keep my fears at bay. It says you are great. Deep down in my other pocket, there's another piece of paper. Take it out and read it. Well, I'm getting into shape when I'm walking tall. It says you are small. Cause you are great and small. You are tiny and tall. Remember through it all. You are great and small. Heard it said that we are made in the image of the maker. So I wrote that down on a little piece of paper. Read it every day. Remember you are great Then again I know we built a lot of tall, tall steeples The whole wide world is more than just us people So through it all Remember we are small Cause we are great and small We are tiny and tall Remember through it all We are great and small Inside my pocket, there's a little piece of paper. I take it out and read it when I'm feeling out of shape or to keep my fears at bay. It says you are great. Deep down in my other pocket, there's another piece of paper. I take it out and read it when I'm getting into shape or when I'm walking tall. It says you are small. Dust to dust we shall return Whole wide world was made for us to learn We are great and small We are tiny and tall Remember through it all We are great and small dig just a little bit deeper. You might know, but humans tend to swing back and forth quite a bit between extremes. We kind of go back and forth like a pendulum. And whenever we get too far over on the spectrum, that's when these little slips of paper come in really handy. They correct us. They draw us back in line with God. It's kind of like a correction line on a gravel, gravel road. It's effective, but annoying, and we all need it at some point. So let's take a look at the piece of paper in our pocket that says we are dust. On the one hand, it can be really easy to think that we are right, that we hold the corner on truth, whether that truth is about the nature of God or what it means to be the church or how to approach public health or how to raise children or farm or quilt or how to throw a baseball or how to ride a skateboard, all kinds of things. It's easy to believe that we are right. In my vocation as a minister, and this happens in lots of other different um, areas of work as well, I was often trained around best practices. The problem is, so were all of my older and younger colleagues. And what educators thought were best practices didn't stay the same. And I can tell you that certainly led to some tensions on occasion. 
whose best practice was best? So the question became, how could we both embrace and hold on to the things that we thought were good and right and important, but also be open enough to receiving new information and learning from other people? So we often talked about how we hold things, but holding them loosely, taking, in, taking things into our hands, but not holding on too tight. Just for the sake of experiment, imagine placing something in your hand. Maybe it's an idea you believe in really strongly or it's a person you care about a lot, someone that you love. Now squeeze your hand into a tight fist as if you're refusing to let go and hold it. Refuse to let it go. Now let go. How did that make you feel to hold on so tight? A little tense maybe? If you held that for a while, you probably wouldn't feel very amiable, willing to engage with someone who had different things in their hands. How did it feel to open up your hand? My guess is that there was some relief. Clinging to things too tightly can be exhausting, no matter what we're clinging to. So how do we hold things, but loosely? Picking up what we think is good, but also leaving our hands open enough to receive good things and willing and able to put down something that no longer seems like something we want to hold. Well, I wonder if our text from Genesis and Psalm 8 can give us some idea. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. And when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings? that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them. I think it's all about perspective. Looking down at the billions of grains of sand or dust from which we were created and realizing that we are one among many. And then looking up at the vast and starry sky and recognizing how much more there is to learn in the universe. We are small and God's creation is vast. Before we leave our dustiness behind, a quick question. Who in your life do you trust to help you to open your hands when you're holding on to things too tightly? Who do you trust to give you constructive criticism? It's a pretty big question. Now let's go to our other pocket. Where's my slip of paper? In our other pocket, we're great. The Talmud says, for my sake was the world created. In Psalm 8 it says, you have made them, us, a little lower than God and crowned us with glory and honor. But sometimes we feel not all that glorious. Sometimes Christian tradition tells us we aren't. There's a very strong stream in Christian tradition, thanks to Augustine, that emphasizes our extreme dustiness. That stream tells us that we are worms. We are unworthy, we're unredeemable, that our very origins are sinful. That stream of Christian tradition finds its starting point in Genesis 3. The starting point is at the moment of disruption, sometimes called the fall. But that's not where it says in the beginning. Genesis 3 starts with the word now. So all this other stuff has happened and now this happens. So even though it's part of the story, it's not the beginning. Our understanding of ourselves, who we are in relation to God and one another starts further back in Genesis 1 and 2. It starts at creation. In Genesis 1, it says that God created humankind in God's image and looked out over everything and called it good, very good. In Genesis 2, it says that God formed a being from dust, out of the ground, and breathed into their nostrils the breath of life, and they became a living being. That's why the writer of Psalm 8 expresses such awe. Human beings are both dust and image of God. We are both, always. 
So my second question for you is this, who do you trust to remind you that you are created in the image of God, to tell you that you are very good? So each week, after we've done a little bit of digging, and then after we've dug a little bit deeper, I wanna give you two suggestions for ways that you might wanna explore some of this a little bit more in the week to come. Today, my first suggestion is a way to continue thinking about being great and small. So if you're able to get out into nature this week, just go out, take a walk, sit on your deck, whatever you can to be out in nature and notice the greatness and the smallness of God's creation in whatever ways you can find it. You could even sit out at night beneath the starry sky. So whatever ways you can notice the greatness and the smallness, or even sense your greatness and smallness. What does it feel like if you're beneath that great starry sky, but what does it feel like when you're next to an ant? So notice those contrasts. The second is to take two slips of paper. And on the one, write a note to yourself for when you are feeling superior and might need to remember that you are a little dusty. And the other one for when you're feeling down and need to remember how very special you are. And you don't have to carry them around in your pocket, but you could. You could just also put them on your refrigerator or in your Bible or wherever you might see them on occasion during the week. And you could, if you wanted to, also do this with someone else, someone, a friend or something like that. You could write the notes to each other. It has to be someone you trust though. <laughs> if you want them to write you a note about what, uh, what you need when you're feeling a little too superior, you want that to be somebody that you trust. So those are my two suggestions for during the week. Get out into creation and notice the greatness and smallness, or take two slips of paper and write yourself those two notes for when you're feeling superior and when you're feeling a little inferior. So let's receive our sending song, Voices United 419, May the Grace of Christ. into our week. Remember that you are both dust and majesty. May you recall your unique place in God's good creation and in the newness that God is always creating through the Spirit in our midst. Go in peace. Amen.